What's going on, Soy Sarat Nation? Benji, one more time here with Miguel Padilla on another episode of Soy San Antonio Football. Miguel, happy Memorial Day weekend. I hope it was awesome for you. I know he was away in Arizona. We yes. stayed here. But we had a lot of soccer. Tons of soccer while we were gone, while the whole break was over. I, I'm excited to talk about today's show, but Yeah, let's get started. Yeah, uh, had a nice little trip to Arizona. It was pretty good. Uh, Glad I was able to do that. So well, let's get started, man. A lot of soccer to talk about. A lot of stuff that happened on this weekend. So let's start with the with the youngsters, man. The 04 Academy kids. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, San Antonio FC Pro Academy, and they are headed to where? They are actually, actually already in the Cayman Islands. Yeah, they are playing for a tournament. The 04 Academy is so just a big shout out to them. That's a huge step uh, for the academy in general uh, to play in an international tournament. Uh, so they get to see uh, other teams besides what they you're, they're used to seeing, like the Houston Dynamo and, and the, the FC Dallas Academies, which are great academies in their own right. But it, it's always good to get that experience and get that international flavor because as these kids grow older, you never know. They might be may, they might make the national team. Yeah, no, so they already and, talk already. We yeah, saw an article. Like an experience, the, that, you know, that way. One of the youngsters that came out of the SA Academy is actually starting, or not starting, but is actually signed with uh, San Antonio FC, and he's part of the uh, San Antonio FC Academy. Uh, the youngster, the 15-year-old Ethan Bryant, was, uh, has actually been even considered through some articles as part of the U.S. national team, you know, yeah, he's development. At the youth level, yeah. At the youth level. Hey, check this kid out. He played this many minutes at 15 for a semi-professional Division two. So it's a good thing that the kids, that the youngsters, the 04 kids, are out there in the Cayman Islands. Best of luck to you. We want to wish you the best. Represent San Antonio to the highest of level. We are proud of you regardless. I mean, they're out there doing things. Yeah. Those are our kids, that's our future. Who never, who knows who we're gonna see next on the pitch. Yeah, this tournament is not about wins or losses. It's just gaining that experience of going somewhere else, uh, seeing something new and uh, going against new players. No, absolutely. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an experience for them, for sure. Um, there's, how many teams, what teams do you know that were playing there? Uh, honestly, I was not too familiar with the with the teams out there. I just know that they were out it's there. It's international, you know, young, it's international it's academy, academy kids. Yeah, so, the old four kids. So imagine uh, from all over the world, kids mm -hmm. from all over at 2004 and up, uh, playing at that at that level. So that's going to be great experience for the kids. Again, good luck to you. Uh, wish you the best of luck. I want to get to something. We did a we did a drawing. We did a, a contest <laughs> last week. Yep. For two tickets, front row next to Mission City from 118. Row 117, seats 19 and 20, right on the pitch, right next to Diego Restrepo. And we're about to draw that winner right here today. You want to do the honors or should I? Uh, I'll shake it up and you do yeah, the honors. So, yeah. Do it? So, we had a contest to see who did it better. Uh, the rules basically were you had to retweet and tag two friends on it. Uh, we had a couple people that were actually followed all the rules. Yeah. Um, you know, still, if you want to comment who did it better, uh, the goal, uh, the goal celebration, whether it was Alexander from last season, yes, which he or... took the picture, or the Alex Bruce one, the picture that I took. Who who did the better celebration? Go ahead and comment below, or you can still comment on our Twitter on our Twitter page and uh, yeah, give your great, opinion. But, great uh, shots! It shows the passion of the players, and we thought it'd be cool just to give you guys an opportunity to get two tickets from row for your choice. So you yeah, ready? So here we go. So let's announce the winner. And then we're going to also DM you on Twitter as Yeah, well. absolutely. We're going to let you know. So you'll probably know before this actually video gets published. Well, Sosa! All right. Congratulations. There you go. Well, Sosa. Well, Sosa. So we'll let you know here shortly that you won. And two you got tickets. two tickets for the Portland Timbers on June 2nd. June 2nd. Which this is this Saturday. Saturday. And it's going to be a good one. We're going to get to that in a little bit. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we will recap uh, this past weekend's game um, away. Uh, but before we get into that, let's uh, talk a little bit of what happened throughout the... Um, soccer world, yeah. USA. No, the big news today what? is FC Cincinnati. That's right. Let's get into that right now. That they are now an MLS. We have a expansion poll. team. We have a poll out there. What do you think? Should San Antonio FC stay in the USL league? Should we just continue moving forward, trying to get an MLS team, or should we just cut ties and just stick with what we got? Or, um, go, or maybe go through the pro reg uh, pro, system, yeah, which doesn't exist yet. No, but with 50 teams potentially, yeah. you kind of <laughs> want to have something set up like yeah. that. And through the hearsay vines that we've been following on our social medias, you can kind of see that, you know, Sunel Galuti and the president of uh, U.S. Soccer Federation are kind of wanting to lead that way into a pro relegation. But, yes, you know, what should San Antonio FC do? Congratulations yeah. to FC, FC Cincinnati officially part of the MLS family. Good job. Yep. Our poll's up and running right now. So uh, right now we're like right at 38 votes. So thank you for everybody who's voted so far. Keep voting, guys. 
Uh, we really want to hear your opinion on where, where you want to see uh, San Antonio FC in the future. And right now, Major League Soccer, not too surprisingly, is leading, but it's a very close call between actually uh, Pro Reg is in yeah. second place with 23%. Yeah, so Major League Soccer right now it seems like where uh, most of the majority of fans want us to end up at. Uh, at 41 percent and interestingly enough at 23 percent is pro reg and not very many people want to say in the usl no 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 not I, I, personally me i don't want to say there because of the officiating i think yeah. it's trash it's worthless but i'll get into that later that's something yeah, another that's, day that we need to talk that, about that's, at length. that's what we're going to talk about we will have a special uh episode here uh, about san antonio fc and the mls movement uh and we'll talk a little bit about that we'll have some special guests out here so stay tuned to that Let's move on forward. USA, speaking about, you know, yeah. going MLS. USA played yesterday, and so did Mexico. Let's start with Mexico a little bit. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Mexico. The only thing that happened there was that there's 80,000 people showing up to the Rose Bowl. Which is I'm great. sorry to say. That's great, but great. I'm sorry, but I'm not really impressed with this Mexican team. They've tied and tied and lost. Yeah. Tied and tied and lost. There's not really much of that I can see that's going to give me any guarantees that they can beat a Germany round one, that they can even beat, uh, what do they have, South Korea. In, and Sweden. Uh, and Sweden. So, so the Slatan being face. on there. Well, Zlatan's not exactly going to no, be playing. No, well, that's, that's true. true. That's yeah, not, uh, they still have some pretty good players on But they still have amazing players. Yeah. I, I mean, I see them going, tying South Korea. Uh, do I see them moving out of the States? No. This feels like when the USA went, Cameron went to what World Cup and they literally lost every game that was in 06 in where 06. they were humiliated in Germany. they lost yeah. everything like yeah. literally they didn't even one win one game yeah i believe they drew well they drew italy they did in the, they final. Drew in the final yeah that's right. they and, drew uh, that. but italy was but, resting all their players yeah i'm afraid that this could be one of those moments for mexico yeah it's, uh, the way they're playing right now is not really giving me much to go on yeah the hardcore fans say that they're going to win the world yeah, Cup, yeah, and hey, that's great and that's know, great put your you passion that, and your goal but the realistic right. fans are are really dreading the they believe they'll make it out of the round, uh, uh, into the round of 16, but, but they're then not going to get out of there. They're going to face potentially Brazil. Brazil. And, and you're going to be toast there if you survive. I would rather. My prediction is that Mexico is going to finish with a win, draw, and a loss. They're going to lose okay. They're going to lose to Germany. Yeah. They'll, they'll find a way to beat South Korea, even though South Korea is going to be a tough, a tough a match. Tough game, and, yeah. then they'll, and they'll draw Sweden. I, I, you know what? I actually agree with that for once. I'm going to agree with you on something. <laughs> I think they will win, draw, and it's going to be a goal differential who moves on. Yeah, it'll be on that one. And it's yeah. going to be how many goals you can score. There's no doubt that they have a team. There's no doubt that they can play. I mean, Carlos Vela, Chicharito, yeah. uh, Wiki, yeah, you got Chucky Lozano. Yeah. They have yeah, so yeah, many quality off. players. Um, but, man, the way the team is playing, it's not really giving me much yeah. to go on. Yeah, so, uh, yesterday's game, if you guys didn't catch it or hear it, it was a 0-0 draw against Wales, Wales. A, a team that didn't have a, a, a Gareth Bale playing. They're not in the World Cup. Yeah, they're not in the World Cup. Gareth Bale obviously had played Saturday in the, uh, Champions. the Champions League Finals. Obviously, he was not going to fly halfway across the planet to play uh, friendly. Uh, and Wales' tactic was pretty much to park the bus. Yeah. Uh, they really didn't have any shots on back. goal. Their keeper was busy all night. Uh, Mexico did what they could to try to score, but nothing happened. It was a 0-0 draw, yeah. other than it was a great atmosphere of 80,000 plus yeah. there. Nothing much there's was no happening. Doubt, there's no doubt that they that the Mexican fans can bring in the you know they can bring in the money for that game. So yeah. you know, good job on the fans for being loyal and just supporting your team to the thick and thin. Best of luck to Mexico yep. and the World Cup. It's it's almost here. It's almost here. Yeah. Now let's talk about the U.S. the, the youth movement yes, and the U.S. Uh, uh, men's the national Jews, team. I'll tell you this much: the average age, the oldest young man when there was 25. And that's, that's, that gives me hope. Again, the USA is not in the World Cup, and that's a great thing in my opinion, because I don't know how you feel, Miguel, but I'm glad we lost. I know you've been me, I've been probably USA's <laughs> biggest critic yeah. of as to, I, I didn't even want to go to the World Cup. I'm glad we lost in the fashion we did. We've been humiliated. Yeah, looking, and, back, looking back at everything that's happened in the past few months since uh, since we got eliminated by Trinidad, uh, by Trinidad, uh, <laughs> all things Trinidad. Yeah, it's it was uh, that was terrible. But uh, the, it was the, a pinch. Yeah, <laughs> the pinch. The pinch but the pain, the pain of it has pretty much subsided. And and looking back at everything, you have to humble yourself. We've had yeah. this discussion yeah, before. Yeah. You have to humble yourself sometimes to realize where exactly where you're at, and it, and it's not an easy place to be. But realizing the players that we had, and now you now that we're turning to the youth as we get ready towards the future, it's going to be a long run. Uh, the Qatar World Cup is four and a half years four away because they're actually playing and they'll be playing in December. But, 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 but forget the World Cup four years away. We still have the Gold Cup coming back yeah. up. 
We have uh, the Centenario, also the Sur Americana. Yeah, we're, yeah. There's rumors that we're going to be playing, playing in Copa America, in South America. America, over in South America. They yeah. want us over there because they know the big crowds they can bring in just by having the yeah. USA. And then, and and then right after that, World Cup qualification and then World cycle Cup starts. Balls. Right and after so that. it's 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 short. What I like right now, and I hate to interrupt you, but what do you think about this super young, absolutely young team? Last night. It was a 3-0 thumping to Bolivia. Bolivia didn't really show much of anything, to be yeah. honest with you. Uh, again, they're, they're in a reconstruction phase. They're not in the World Cup either. But we had two 18-year-olds score or open their U.S. Uh, soccer account with the United States national team, Timothy Weah. Yeah, and one, Josh Sargent, the and other. Josh Sargent, which, if we look back a little bit more, have done excellent jobs in tournaments, even winning the CONCACAF, two, some of these kids were part of the U16 yeah. that won the World Cup, the U16, I mean, uh, CONCACAF champions, yeah. you know, which was a shock to everybody. Yeah, and they did well in India in the and U17. And third place yeah. out there, you know, and they did great out there. These are the kids now in division, well, at the at the, at the first team at the national yeah. level. Well, Tim Weah started uh, for PSG the last the last uh, game of the match, That's or correct. yeah, the last game of the, the League of One. Uh. Season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he, he got some experience there. Uh, Pulisic mm -hmm. obviously is coming off a successful season with Borussia Dortmund and uh, Josh Sargent. Is, Josh Sargent, yeah. I think, is over in England with Everton, isn't he? I believe. I, I don't quote me on that yeah. one, but I will check <laughs> on that. But Josh Sargent's doing Palmer Brown playing in the MLS right now. Yeah. Zimmerman scored one. Yeah. Winston McKinney with Schalke. Winston McKinney with Schalke. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And we, saw, we even saw Julian Green out there. Uh, on the on the one yeah, so a lot of European experience yeah. coming up with this uh, young national team. I'm excited for it personally. Uh, as a raw talent, I, there were mistakes made. Yeah, I think Bolivia was a good test for this young team. Yeah. Uh, but now they got some tough matches coming up, uh, coming up ahead with France, it's, it's giving people Colombia. Promise. Yeah, there you go. It's giving people promise. even if they even if they get stopped in those games, man. Some I think that's still they will still there's something for them to gain from that. And they have the Irish on Saturday. Yeah, they have Ireland this Saturday. Ireland this Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. That's going to be one wonderful game. Yeah. Stay tuned. We will be retweeting everything that comes out of American Outlaw San Antonio or any other watch parties going around the town, so you can go out and enjoy watching the U.S. men's national team. Yeah. A very very young team. Yeah. Probably not going to be the same team that we saw. Yesterday, I know some of these guys had just come back from rotation and whatnot, so we'll see how that goes. But I think I, it looks hopeful. I mean, it's giving me, it sparked my interest. It's brought back my interest and hope and trust that we are actually going to produce a quality football team. Yeah. So yeah. it looks bright. Four years of development, you have 17, 18 year olds. Yeah. I'm down with that. So yeah. All the problems we're, have not been solved. We're not saying that all the problems no, of the no, US we're have far been from it. We're, we're far, far from, from it, but I think we're. We're heading in the right direction, and then we'll see with with the GM and the head coach and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, we still need a head coach. And we can't forget about the women's team who's playing in the World Cup next year in 2019. No, that is true. So here's a question for you: Who would you like to see coaching the United States? Ooh, that's a that's a tough question because there's a couple coaches that I do have in mind that in my head would make good coaches. Obviously, Todd Ramos is the one that sticks out for me because he's, he's got experience he's got at the youth level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know some people are saying like, yeah, he's part of the old system. Eh, I mean, he's had success at the youth level, and these kids are are familiar. With yeah, Ramos. number one example. So I was winning the Concacaf champions. Yeah, so I would love to see Tab Ramos become the head coach. Uh, I mean, there's a couple other names. Uh, the fun one for me is Miguel Herrera because yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think he'd be the exactly. Uh, he'd be the fun know. pick, but I don't think yeah, he'd be the best. Yeah, pick, yeah so. no, he would. He'd bring <laughs> in a different. But he will bring that passion. He would bring that, the passion. and that's what I and I agree with you. I want. I would like a a, a, a coach like that. I'm done with the whole. Jurgen Klinsmann yeah. and the whole everything yeah. Bruce Arena experience. Yeah. My third pick would be Carlos uh, uh, Oscar Pareja from FC Dallas. He would probably yeah. be my third pick. How about the? How about a, a former USM tier? Like what about Landon Donovan? How about Chirundolo? Uh, what about the, these guys? Donovan? Does, I, I would like to see Donovan having some experience coaching elsewhere before he goes on that big stage of the US yeah. men's national team. I'm not saying that he won't have success. Yeah. But he's just unproven and and that's correct. Where the coach. US is at right now, we need somebody that's yeah, experience that with they experience. Know what they're yeah. Doing. So we'll see. We'll keep our eyes peeled and see what's going coming down the pipeline for as far as the US men's national team. We're incorporating this into our topic because people want us to talk a little bit more about that, a little bit more international soccer. So yeah. we got it. Moving on, let's recap Reno. Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about Reno. Man, Obviously, I just get my thirty seconds here. Yeah, go for All it. All right, here we go. Thirty seconds for me. Thirty second by, rant by, by Benji. There you go, by me. It, it's it's getting boring watching the San Antonio FC team play on their heels constantly. Could not capitalize on a rookie keeper from Reno. 
the things that we could not do against a youngster who's basically playing his rookie year, we can't even score on that. Yes, Gordon was the player of the match for San Antonio. He was absolutely everywhere, but it takes more than that. Again, no creativity up top, no ball movement towards the middle, the defense doing their best they can to defend and not get scored on. Diego Restrepo doing his best to stop everything that comes his way. It is getting boring. We're seeing this away. We're seeing this at home. I'm still upset that we tied the last place team of the USL West and then we travel out to uh, Nevada to only lose to a team that's basically in the ranks. This weekend, we're going to have a team that is ranked in the top five right now and is going to come into San Antonio and be careful because if we can't do anything up top, if we can't create anything in the middle, we're going to get embarrassed and that's not going to be a good spot. Right now, we are tied in ninth. In ninth. We're tied in ninth with two other teams and that's not good. It is crunch time. It is crunch time. We cannot be making this mistakes. These many mistakes in the middle up front. We cannot be doing that at all, period. We need to be starting winning games and we need to start scoring goals, which is what we are not doing. No goal scored. That's my 30 second rant. That's what I thought about the Reno game. Boring, same with the same old thing. Disappointing, but I have to keep faith. I have to maintain and thinking that these guys are gonna find a way to make things work, to get us at least into that last playoff spot or second last playoff spot but it's going to be a difficult road from here to the cup we have put ourselves in a situation where we need to dig ourselves out of and if we can't beat timbers too i question playing phoenix i question playing sacramento i question playing the all monarchs done all right in defense of san antonio fc they had come off a wednesday night game where they played a full 120 minutes in the u.s open cup a highly emotional game. It was a great victory. The players celebrated afterwards on the field with the fans. Then they had a Thursday practice and then they had to travel Friday to Reno, a place where you're going basically from sea level basically here in San Antonio, a couple hundred feet above sea level to somewhere that's about 6,000 feet above sea level uh, to play on a game on Saturday. The players were, uh, with all that travel and everything, uh, you expected the players to be a little bit fatigued, uh, have heavy legs. They have to get a, uh, accustomed to the elevation in a short amount of time. Uh, so I was expecting them to lose. I, I, I really was. So I, I, and not, I'm not saying that this was a throwaway game. It's unfortunate that they lost, especially being in the position that they're at, but I was expecting them to lose. Uh, with that said, they played pretty well overall. I know they gave up two goals and on the defensive side, but on the offensive side, it was pretty weak. You know, they are not shooting goals. Uh, they're not taking, they did take 19 shots on goal. They were a little bit more aggressive inside the box. They took 12 shots uh, inside the penalty box. So they were aggressive. And they were close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So, I mean, we're getting there. Again, individually, they're playing well. I, I, I sound like a broken record, but it, it is. Individually, they have... There's no denying. Yeah, I agree they, with that. As individuals, they're playing well, but as a unit, as a team, there's no cohesion, there's no rhythm, there's no buildup. You know, I want to see, I, I mean, the, a little bit of the tiki talk. I'm not saying that they have to be FC Barcelona, but in, in soccer, you have to build up. You can't have just one guy running and attacking and expect to score a bunch of goals. Our leading goal scorers are two people with two goals. Gordon's only played, what, two or three USL matches? And he's, That's he's, it. And he's already the team leading scorer with two. Right. And nobody else is scoring. Our other guy is gone, which is Chris Tierpak. He's yeah, not he's on the team anymore. Down there, right? Yeah, so, I mean, what is the solution for San Antonio to turn this around uh, and, and start drawing some wins so we can at least think about finishing in the top four of the USL uh, Western Conference? You know, it's a good question. What do they need to have to do? And we're gonna propose that question to you. Uh, stay tuned to one of our articles. Uh, it's going to be a three-piece uh, commentator opinion, mine, Miguel's, and Ms. Danielle's. And we'll be publishing that probably tomorrow. So stay tuned to that. We'll be talking about the first uh, quarter of San Antonio FC and the grades that we're giving them. But, but yes, what do they need to do, Miguel? Uh, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that question. What, what do they really need to do? I can sit here and tell you, well, they need to do this, they need to do that. At the end of the day, it's up to the team. When are they going to show up to play at San Antonio FC? Because they, what they do doing. show up to play. They play. You can tell that these guys are playing with their hearts out. They're no, not, there's no doubt. I do 100%. not. I do not deny the fact that these guys are giving their all on their pitch. What's happening that we can't get the results? Is, is, is there a miscommunication between the defense and the midfield, or do we need? Is it a player alignment? Are we playing players where they don't? Well, first of all, we're playing Mike Seth in the defense. Yeah, was, which I personally think if we would put Mike Seth up front, playing his natural position. The man can score. Yeah, with Cheno Hurt, uh, I mean, I love Alex Bruce. He's a great young talent. He's developing, developingly, nicely, tongue twister there. 
But uh, he is playing well, but I believe for right now what we need is Mike Seth up forward yep. uh, to put away some goals. Yeah, uh, we need somebody up there creating that knows what to do because right now... I would put I would put Elizondo back in the starting 11. He was back up there, yes. I like that I idea. mean, if you have to sacrifice uh, Escalante, Mikey Lopez, I would keep Gordon out there on the right wing. I would keep Sony. Sony yeah. creates a lot of plays. Sony, he, he yeah. Moves a lot of, he, moves, he does a lot of ball movement. But that's our recap with Reno. It was a 2-1 to one loss. Great goal by... Gordon doing amazing work for us in San Antonio. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, hopefully we'll move on to this Saturday when San Antonio FC faces Timbers 2, uh, who is in a very, very, very good. And mind you, as well, uh, Reno extends their winning streak to seven games. We were at five, and Reno ended up getting seven. So we're going off a team who has been who's won the last seven games, and now we're going to face... A team that currently sits second at the table. Yeah, Port Your yeah Portland, Portland currently sits at seven wins, uh, two draws, and three losses. Second place. To me, they're the surprise team. I think they're the surprise team of many in the U.S. Yeah, well, last year, they were down they were the bottom, bottom of the They were bottom. I believe they won last. three games yeah. last year. Somewhere yeah, they, they weren't. Less than five games they won. And then this year, they turned it around. Yeah, this year, they're turning around. They have an offensive powerhouse in, uh, in the name escapes me, uh, Forrester, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ludbach. Uh, I can't yeah. it's, it's a German name. Foster Foster Langsdorf. Yeah, Foster Langsdorf. Who currently name. leads with five goals. Who's uh, not he's not German. Striker. He's American. He's American. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. He's American. Sounds German, but he's American. Uh, no, yeah. Four he's is. a team with five goals. Uh, he's a striker. He's going to come in aggressive. He's the player to watch against Speed. Portland. Speed off that bat. Young guy, 22 yeah. years old. He's a beast. He's yeah. He's got a lot of speed. He's got a lot of technique on that ball. Once he touches it, at least two or three guys. I, I, I actually want to see that matchup. I would like to see how King or Felix is going to match up against uh, Forrest, and we'll see how, how they do. We know Diego Restrepo is going to do his best. Yeah, Keith. We know that. There's no doubt. It's going to solely fall on the, the back four, and that's going to be the thing. Is San Antonio going to go and play to draw at home? They need to play to win. They need the three That's points. The They're ninth right now. In my opinion, the way the situation's going, I don't know. I can't speak for them. But right now, to save face, I think they're trying to just pull a, a point out of here, trying to get out against the second team. If we don't see any attacking right off the bat, they're playing for a draw. Yeah, uh, it, it's possible, especially since they have a huge U.S. Open Cup uh, the following um, Wednesday, Wednesday against, against Dallas. Dallas. Correct. So, and we'll do a we'll do a detailed uh, analysis on that one uh, early next week uh, on that match. But going back to Portland, you know, what are the tactics that Coach Powell are going to come out? Is he going to come out full strength for this team uh, to play uh, uh, Portland too? Will he mix it up with some of the youth and some of the uh, some of the older guys uh, and hope for the draw? We don't know. We don't know. It's, don't know. it's a tough decision. He needs, a tough we need decision. three points. We need three points regardless. We need three points regardless. But how, 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 he's, how he's going to form the starting 11 and the, and the formations and stuff, that's that's a tough decision on, on Coach Paul because he has that and then you have a historic game. It, it, it might possibly be the biggest game in San Antonio's short history. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, playing a big team like FC Dallas, an MLS team. An MLS team in San Antonio and we're trying to bid for an MLS. Uh, you know, a lot of eyes are going to be on that game. Oh, for sure. A lot of folks. I think that will be the number one uh, USL uh, most watch, I think, in my opinion, because I know there's that a lot of yeah. teams, there's a lot of expansion teams that are going to be watching San Antonio FC take on FC Dallas. But going back to the game against Timbers 2, what do you do? I think, in my opinion, if I'm Coach Powell, I will do my best to go out attacking, get these goals, because we've seen if we score first, we have a tendency to give up space, give up uh, territory, and then they come right back in and just tie the game yeah. up, and we're playing on our heels. For a backup win. We don't have Chris Tierpak anymore. We don't have Channel right now. Yeah. We don't have uh, the youngster Connor Presley right now. We don't have a lot of players that yeah. can make things happen for us. Because right now, nobody's making anything happen. Nope. Uh, nothing up front. I'm sorry, but there's nobody doing anything yep. up front. There's nothing. You know, there's not. That, and I hate talking about the past because it's in the past, but let's talk about a little bit of the yesterday, last year's forward attacks. Yep. Building forwards. If the force wouldn't get you, guess who would get you on the other side? Says that Elizondo. Yeah. If Elizondo wouldn't get you, guess who would get yeah, you in Gordon. the middle? You had Gordon. Yeah. If Gordon wouldn't get you, guess who would be on the other side? Chris Tierpak. Yeah. And if that wasn't working, guess who was doing it from the outside? Rafa Castillo. Yeah. That was a forward-moving operation last year that got us to where we needed to get. This year, there's nothing. Yeah. It is dead. It's a stalemate. They need to come out attacking. They need to go after this keeper. 
take the shots whenever they can and let the defense rest for some, but they're not yeah. going to. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, we need to win the ball in the middle. And that's what we're not doing. We're not winning the ball in the middle. We're not moving the ball forward. And it's just, it's creating a lot of havoc. Yeah, San Antonio definitely needs to play on the other side of the midfield line. Uh, they've been playing too much in their own third for much of the season. Uh, this is another game where they were out, uh, they lost the possession, uh, the possession game. Uh, they need to be aggressive. They need to have the. They have to control the ball more than fifty percent of the time. And not only that, but be effective at being those final two thirds where they're attacking and and going after the keeper. You know, keep the other keeper busy. Let Diego Strip have some rest. Absolutely. Now, so that's what needs to happen Saturday, seven thirty, Toyota Field in San Antonio, Texas. Timbers two versus San Antonio. We don't know if it's a game of the week, but it's going to be one amazing game to watch. Hell of a game to see. It's going to be a battle on the field. It's going to be hopefully a packed stadium again. Uh, they've been doing an absolutely amazing job packing that stadium. Over 6,000 members in an 8,000 stadium. Doing a great job. So every game you go to, you're going to be feeling the soccer environment for sure. Miguel, that's going to wrap it up for us. I want to remind you guys to stay tuned. Keep updated. Blossoms is coming right around the corner. Second or third week of June, they start their season. There's a lot of stuff coming out there. Good player coach interviews from Ms. Danielle. Good job out there doing with the uh, doing work with the WPSL and the, the San Antonio Blossoms. We will give you all that information as uh, the season comes upon us. Stay tuned to those articles. Also, I want to remind you folks, if you want to do advertisement with SourceSav, inbox us, DM us, send us a, a message, and we will work with you. We are actually now doing action shot, soccer shots and anything else that you might need from Soy San Antonio football. I am Benjamin Mendoza. And I am Miguel Padilla. If you want to contact us for advertising, hit us up on soy.saf210 at gmail.com or hit us up on uh, our social media at soy underscore saf. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's, That's all number one. Hey, thank you for tuning in. We will be seeing you Saturday at Toyota Field and then Wednesday again at Toyota Field when they take on FC Dallas. This Saturday, San Antonio FC versus Timbers 2. And we will see you in San Antonio.